Rach here. I'm just jumping on quickly uh, because we had an overwhelming response due to um, a quick story we put up during the week about pressure mobilization technique. Um, we had 95% of people that responded to that saying that they wanted a quick video on uh, the pressure mobilization technique. So I brought Malachi in today. He's here because uh, he's on school holidays and it's something to keep him busy. <laughs> um, I'm going to wrap Malachi uh, and explain to you what you would do if your child was bitten by one of the deadliest animals uh, here in Australia. So the pressure immobilization technique is used essentially to apply pressure to the bite site and then immobilize the limb. This would work if anyone was bitten either on an arm or a leg. If they were bitten on the face or the torso, we'd just apply direct pressure. And the key to this is keeping our patient really still and being able to act quickly. We saw on the news just a week ago um, in, in another state here in Australia that a 10 year old boy was bitten by a snake and it was the quick acting um, teacher that was able to apply pressure immobilization and then provide good quality CPR that saved his life. So uh, as we head into the holiday season, really important that, that we are aware of where we're going and we're packing to what we're doing as well. So if you're doing any hiking, any camping or anything like that, make sure you have a fully stocked first aid kit and some couple of extras you might want to pop in there is a 10 to 15 centimeter elastic um, bandage and even a snake bite bandage that is specific for our pressure immobilization. So what animals will we use this for? We'd use it for all snake bites, including sea snakes here in Australia. We'd use this for our funnel web spider. We'd use it for the blue ring octopus, and lastly, the cone shell. Just on uh, Sunday last week, uh, we were taking our boat out and my husband was in knee deep water uh, just at the boat ramp here in Victoria. Um, and he was just doing some safety checks on the boat before we took our boys out uh, for a quick trip. And um, we uh, were, I was putting the life jackets on the boys and Craig quite quickly um, moved out of the water. And I thought, oh, what's going on here? And he grabbed a bucket and he scooped up a blue ring octopus. And that was just here in Victoria. And it was only uh, a couple of centimeters away. It had its blue rings, so it was in a threatening uh, stage. So at any point it could have stung Craig and, um, and he could have had minutes to live. Luckily, we always have a stocked first aid kit in the back of our car. Uh, in this case, he wasn't stung. He was able to uh, scoop it up and make sure um, it was safe uh, area for himself and also the kids. Uh, but I also carry these in my car at all times as well. So if our child um, or a person was, doesn't have to be a child, it's the same technique for uh, all age groups. If they were bitten uh, on the arm or the leg, what we'd do is use the 10 to 15 centimeter elastic bandage and we'd place that over the bite site. Now I'm not pulling any tension on it. All I'm doing is wrapping it around and around and around. All right, this will get tighter over time. So we're gonna pretend that Malachi has been bitten on the arm here. Thank you for being our model. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just gonna wrap this bandage and hopefully you can see there at home. All I'm doing is wrapping it around and around. And when I'm doing this, I wanna try and restrict as much movement that I have to the patient. The ideal position for our patient to be laying in, um, sorry, to be in is laying down. And the reason is we wanna slow everything down, sitting up, our heart's working harder to pump blood around our body. So if we're laying down, um, that's definitely the best position. And even when I'm wrapping this, I'm restricting from moving the arm up or down or anything like that. So just being nice and gentle and try not to move our patient very much. So just over and over until your bandage runs out. You'll notice these bandages are quite long and that's okay. Let's bring that all the way around. And then once we have our secondary bandage, we're gonna start from the fingers and move all the way up to the armpit. And the reason is with one of these venomous animals here in Australia, when they bite us, they'll inject their venom into our lymphatic system, which is our slow moving system. If we can apply pressure and immobilize that system, we're hoping that slows um, that venom moving up into a gland and then entering uh, our body and then starting to cause some significant uh, damages. So the second one, um, what I'm going to do is if you can keep your fingers together like that and your thumb out, beautiful, you're a great patient. Right? And what you'll see on this snake bite bandage is it has a row of indicators through the middle. Um, they're all, at the moment, they all look like rectangles. When I stretch this to the right tension, they're gonna turn into squares. If I was to overstretch it, it would go back to a rectangle. So it's really important that we're just watching that um, tension at all times. And I'm just going to leave your thumb out for me and just close your thumb for me. All right, so I'm just leaving the fingers out so I can see that change. And I'm having really good control over my bandage. Again, nice and slowly. And I'm coming back over that bandage about a quarter of the way. So almost marrying it up with that last line, all right? Nice straight 
bringing it up and around. Can you start to feel that? Right. As it gets tighter, um, they start to become a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, it is completely safe to have these on people. They feel a bit like a blood pressure cuff. All right. So I'm just making sure that every single time I wrap that around, it's keeping that tension at squares, which is that perfect tension. It's an amazing invention because up until now, uh, a lot of people thought our technique was tourniquet and cutting off blood supply, which we don't want to do. We want to avoid doing that. And the reason is some of these snakes that bite us might be a dry bite. By applying a tourniquet, we actually did more damage um, because some of those snake bites were dry bites. So we definitely don't want to do that. We want to make sure we use our bandages. And if we don't have access to bandages, we can use items of clothing. So shirts and pants and things like that. So you notice I'm all the way up underneath the armpit, which is great. You're starting to feel that pressure there, Malachi. And if I've got some leftover bandage like I have here, I wouldn't come back down the limb, right? All I'm going to do is just tuck it in or even cut the bandage, right? We don't want to move it all the way back down the limb because that's going to cause more pain, right? From there, if Malachi had been really bitten by a snake, I would actually immobilize his limb to his body. So using uh, a triangle bandage, I would just literally tie his arm to his torso uh, to keep that even closer and less movement. So as you can see, once the pressure immobilization technique is applied, you'll start to see that it slows down that system. Look at the change in color there. Right? Now I can feel his hands becoming quite cool and clammy, but it's slowing down that entire system. I just want to make sure that you know that this is completely safe to wrap on a child if they haven't been bitten by a snake. This is for a demonstration uh, purposes only. Malachi is not getting hurt at all throughout this video. <laughs> Thanks so much for being my volunteer. <laughs> And that's how we use a pressure mobilization technique. Thanks so much for watching.